Ich sitze hier im Nightliner mit äh, Zoltan von Ignite. Zol Zoltan. Ja. Yeah. Und um, Ignite played a really great gig at the Noah Festival. So, how do you feel right now down from the stage? Well, you know, you just got to come down when you're when you sing. Um, I don't. I wish I was Justin Bieber, because he sings about partying and girls and fun. But I write songs about World War II and about communism. You know, you can you can't lie when you're a musician. You have to write about what you know, right? He parties. He dances with girls. I don't. We hang out with like, you know. <laughs> well, I, I I talk about history, and and um, you know my family comes from Hungary, and I grew up in a communist country. So my lyrics are dark. What I'm trying to say is that when you come on a stage, and you sing 20 years worth of music, you're gonna have songs that bring you up, songs that bring you down. It's a big roller coaster ride. Sometimes you're going to be happy at the end of a song. I have songs about my grandmother who passed away not too recently. I have songs about my father who passed away not too recently. So you have this whole... That's why singers are weird. Because you, you go through all these emotions in an hour of music that you've had 10 years ago. It's like bringing up every ex-boyfriend or girlfriend you've ever had. You know what I mean? And talking about them and going through it every single day. It's kind of a weird thing. So you take about an hour or so to decompress. Wow. So the show is great. But you know what, I, I don't really, I, I just do what I do. Like if we have a play a club show, I do the same show, you know what I mean? If we have a festival show, because um, it's, uh, we're very lucky to be here. And so you're, you're very thankful, and at the same time you got to kind of come down off of it. So I feel good. Uh, you mentioned uh, Donald Trump on stage. You don't like him. No. Um, so uh, what's your intention to, to bring it to the crowd? I don't know, you know, I don't know if I can really, you know, we push organizations called Sea Shepherds and Mets on Frontier, Doctors Without Borders, and then we've had a lot of people sign up for Sea Shepherds, a lot of people helped the organization, made, made them some money. You know, when it comes to politics, you're always putting yourself out there because half of your, half the crowd might like Donald Trump in America, you know? Mm. A lot of people from the East Coast, bands that are friends with, voted for him. So when you go out there and say, you know, Donald Trump's an idiot, um, you know, you lose, people get mad at you, and you lose fans. But you know what, man, he's going to destroy the, he's going to destroy the country, he's going to destroy the world. The guy, I mean, he makes George Bush, who's a, who is a uh, uh, war criminal, makes him look like a great president. This guy is a jackass. He's a selfish, self-centered, egotistical, maniacally insane man who is... <laughs> I mean, he can't say that Nazis are bad. His daughter and his, his son-in-law are Jewish, and they don't even come out and say it. They're Jewish, and they don't even come out and say, hey, Nazis are bad, and we shouldn't, you know, protect them and stuff. It's insane what's going on in the White House. We have, we have people that, that are, are backing the right, the alt-right, they're called. And in Arizona, we just did this thing. He said, "These guys, these guys are these armed, these armed members of these alt-right organizations in America said that they will start a civil war if Donald Trump's impeached, Whoa. and Donald Trump will be impeached because he's he's Putin's boy. Putin's, you know, yeah. putting him in. So I mean, are you kidding me? Like, how could anybody like this guy? Like, it was funny at first, but Mussolini was funny, you know. Everyone laughed at Hitler. This little guy, little, right? Everyone laughed at Hitler." You know, all these psychopathic, crazy leaders were funny at first. And there's no way. They're not going to make it in. Hitler's never going to be, you know, cha chancellor. And they're like, oh, there's no way Donald Trump's going to be. He kept winning and kept winning. And the crazier and crazier stuff he said, the more and more people liked it. And what drives me crazy is my Italian friends and my Irish friends that say, we don't want any immigrants in here. I'm like, motherfucker, you're fucking Italian. Did you think 100 years ago they liked your ass here? No. They wanted the Italians out. Do you think the Irish were wanted in America? No. No. So what the fuck are you saying? Don't bring immigrants in. Everyone's a fucking immigrant in here except for the American Indians. But we killed off 80 million of them. So they don't really have a say anymore because they're all, they're all gone. This is crazy. America's so nuts right now. It's so nuts. And Putin's pulling the strings. And so that he keeps his job, he's going to start a war with another crazy motherfucker, um, Kim Il-sung. Right? Of North Korea. Oh, yes. But this is nuclear war we're talking about because you can't impeach, you can't kick out a sitting president if 
they get if, if they're in war. Yeah. So if he, to keep his job, maybe he'll start a nice little nuclear <laughs> nuclear war. And it's funny right now, right? But it's fucking, you know, it's not. It's scary. And I just can't believe he's still in power. I can't believe that the Republican Party and the Democrats don't have enough sense to say, you know what, let's get this guy out of here. But Pence is just as nuts. Telling women it can't do abortions, don't believe in climate change. It's just, it's just like, I don't know where these people come from. So it's really divided. The country's really divided. Really divided. I, I'm speechless right now. You're the first American person, but you're not, you, you have no, you Hungarian roots. That's or, why. Yeah. Because Americans are dumb. The majority, I'm saying it, America, I can say it. Americans are dumb. They like to stay dumb. They don't want to get educated. They don't want to stay on a, on, on a platform. They don't want to talk about history. They don't want to talk about the Roman Empire. They don't want to talk about communism or Nazism. They don't want to talk about anything but drinking beer and have a good time. Yeah, bro. Right? And it makes me sick that these American bands can't get on stage and do something because they're worried about losing half their fan base. Punk rock was uh, formed for political social environmental reasons hardcore was about social movements about straight edge and all these other things it's a movement what the fuck happened to punk rock and hardcore do you hear anybody on stage talking about anything interesting say i want to see everybody kick each other's ass in the middle of the set. i want to go crazy this one's called blah, blah, blah. and these bands sing about how i'm depressed or how i'm this and how i'm that all these poor little woe was me but they don't fucking talk about anything real and it drives me crazy so i do it on stage but we're not as you know who does it? You know who does it? Rise Against. Rise Against does it. They don't care. They'll play in front of a soccer stadium to talk about veganism, socialism, politics, Trump, and everything. And I'm not on Trump's bandwagon because I have family members that are Republican because we came from a communist country. So all the people that came out, like all the, the, the people in, uh, in Miami, they, that got killed by Che and all those other guys, they kicked them out and they're now living in Miami, they're all super right-wing Republicans because they look at Democrats as communists. So people in my family that came to America turned Republican. And we have, it's really stressful at, at family functions because the younger kids are all Democrats, but the, the parents are Republican. I understand where they're coming from. They liked Reagan and all these other things. But fucking George Bush Jr., and this moron, I mean, come on, isn't there anybody else in the Republican Party that has a fucking brain or a soul? They want to t they talk about being Christian, they talk about the Christian platform, and they want to take away people's rights to fucking uh, health care, and they want to take away universal rights to people uh, so they can, if they have cancer, they, can, they die of it because they can't go to the hospital because they can't afford it. That's Christian. They, they, they bang the Bible all day long. They make sure the women don't have abortions, but they'll drop bombs on anybody who's Arabic or anybody who's dark-skinned. They'll drop, bomb the shit out of them. I call it post-abortion. So they have this platform, this Bornean Christian psycho-ideology platform, but they, they live, they do the opposite. They do the devil's bidding, in my, my views. And the Democrats are all trying to vie for their, their, they're not, there's nobody, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was the one guy that had some balls, he was going to do it, and they all said, he's a socialist. So was FDR. He had a socialist platform with, with, with uh, capitalist taxes on it to pay for it all. He had a nice mix, and, and Bernie Sanders was a man that gives, cares about human beings, that's why he didn't make it. So, so what happened in America, in a nutshell? This is my view. We pushed too hard. Obama comes in, he's a black president. That's a big deal in itself. I have gay family members. I, I love gay people. They're, they're, they're some of my closest friends in Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. I mean, everyone's gay. Right? Who cares? I don't give a shit what you do in your bed, right? <laughs> but when they're pushing for the gay people to have equal rights to get married, I, would, I said to them, I said, listen, I understand that you're a human being and you should have the right to get married. I get it. But are you sure you want to get married? Because in California, you get married, people get married so they can steal from each other. Two years later, I can sue you and get half of everything you own and take your car and your house and everything like that. And, and my gay friend said, we have as much right to be miserable as you straight people. So, all right. <laughs> all right, because right now it was, it was illegal to get married. And so they, it was, it, they only got married because of love. Now, the, a lot of the... Um, Divorce attorneys are like, yeah, two big incomes coming. These two straight, gay, you know, homosexual men work a lot. They don't have kids really. They don't have a family a lot of times. So they work, 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 work. They make a lot of money. And so now a lot of people are getting married so they can rip the other guy off. It's kind of sad. But it's their right. Yeah. So what we brought up, we had a black president who I, I pushed really hard for to bring Obama into office. He did an amazing job. 
the gay gay people got got married, right? They they put the gay flag on the White House. I'm cool with it, but the rest of America was not cool with that, right? They were pushing too much. Then after that, they wanted to bring a woman in an office. In America, the slaves were freed before women had a right to vote. Women suffrage was in the 20s, 1920s. The slaves were freed in the 1800s, right? Women were still and are still a kind of second-class citizens in America, and. Because of the divorces that are going on, because people in America, we lost our, we lost our um, ethics, we lost our family structure, we, 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 we sue each other for fucking everything. You'll get married and all of a sudden your wife will, you know, you're some plumber or something, your wife will sue you and take the kids and not let you see the kids. And you're just going to want to go to work. It happens all the time. There's a documentary called um, Divorce Corp. C-O-R-P, Divorce Corp, and it's narrated by a guy named Dr. Drew, and you got to watch it. It's the scariest movie you ever see. It's about child custody and about divorce. So you have a 75% divorce rate in America, 50-75% divorce rate. Everybody's been through court, where the first thing they do is they sign on for um, income and expense declaration. They want to see how much money you make, because it's called the court of equity. Divorce court is not the court of justice. It's called the court of equity. And there's no there's no people in you know judging you. It's one guy. He's the judge, who's a lawyer, who's a, who's a, who's a, a, a a lawyer himself. So it's all about making money. Give us money, 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 money. So all these people get divorced, right? All of a sudden, here comes Hillary Clinton, a strong woman, and all I heard from my middle class, average white, working construction. You're not going to vote for that bitch, are you? You're not going to vote for that bitch. You're going to vote for that bitch. That's all I heard. It wasn't even about her platform. It wasn't about if she was right. It wasn't anything. It was just she's not going to vote for her because she reminded she didn't have much charisma. She had this strong, tight sense to her, right? And she all reminded these guys of their ex-wives. But you're not, you're not marrying her, dude. This is your president, right? But no, 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 no. Because right now, uh, Kid Rock is running for Senate, and he'll win. Because he's this fucking celebrity. Because Americans are stupid. Because what we do is we watch TV, and if you have a big ass and your name is Kim Kardashian, then that's what I want to be like, rich for no reason, right? I want to be rich for no reason. Talk about my big ass. And that's what America is. We've lost our, we've lost our way. We're at the bottom. We're the bottom swing of the Roman Empire. So Trump got elected because people were saying Mexicans were stealing our jobs. I don't know if you guys have ever done it. I, we have a small winery, and I've picked grapes before. It's fucking hard. And not just grapes, but to go out and pick oranges and strawberries. When in Tokyo, you'll buy <clears throat> three oranges, and it's 15 euro. Three oranges, because the Japanese guy's picking it. So what we do in California is we bring in all these slave labor, Mexican people, kind of legally, kind of not legally, and they pick all the fruit and stuff, and that's why California is the 14th largest economy in the world. Because of our produce consumption, because we have we have sun all year round, and we have this free labor. What Mexicans take in my job? If we didn't have Mexicans, who was, who'd work in the restaurants? Who would work in the service economy? Who would fucking do anything? We don't. White people don't want to do hard work or hard labor like that. There's construction guys, yeah, but I mean that's some Mexicans taking your job, and there's no way. He just went on the fears of people over and over, and then here's Hillary Clinton. The Democrats should have put an old white man in. This is why. It's too fast. You have a black man. You push the gay rights. You have transgender stuff. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And I'm cool with it. I'm liberal. But America isn't. Most of America's Bible, Bible Belt, you know, central right. And you put this woman in that doesn't have any charisma, right? Not like there's, other, there's some other women right now. I can't wait till they start running in the next couple years. But Hillary Clinton, which I would have backed. But it should have been Bernie Sanders. And here comes Trump. And I knew that motherfucker was going to win. I knew it. Because he went, he was like, yeah, don't like Mexicans. Yeah. You know, fucking, yeah. And, and that's all it was. <laughs> you, you know what Hitler said about it, Jews? They will take your jobs. It's the same things. It's, it's, uh, it's the same concept. But said. we don't know anything of what Hitler said because we don't fucking pay attention in school. Because it doesn't af affect us. Because we can go out and be a bartender and pull in, you know, two, three thousand dollars a month and live in our little uh, little uh, uh, apartment and have our little silly little lives and not worry about the world because we think we're America and no one's gonna no one's gonna attack us. It's gonna like the Visigoths when they came in and f sacked Rome. We are, our, our military spread out Right? We're begging people to be in the military nowadays because people aren't enlisting like they used to. Spread out all over the world. Everyone's sucking us dry. 
and we are the Roman Empire about to collapse. And the problem is that Trump and his family came in to suck the rest of it dry. It's a money grab. Everybody in the, in, in the White House are there just to make a ton of money and just to kill off the country somehow. Me, 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 me. It's insane. It's like that movie Greed in the 80s. That's what it is. Yeah. So do I like Trump? Absolutely not. But Trump's not, he can't do anything by himself. It's these guys, Boehner, and these guys that are in, in, in the Senate that won't stop this insanity because they're trying to get their bullshit bills passed so that their families can fucking health care and their families can have better quality of life while we're taking away everyone else's family's health care. And then they go to church and they call themselves Christians. I don't think Jesus would be too stoked about that. Are you religious? I'm Catholic. I was born Catholic and I was raised Catholic and Catholics, the church, the, we had a church where the communists were afraid of this one priest, he was gnarly and everyone followed him and the, the, the communists would bulldoze churches down because you're not supposed to believe in God, you're supposed to only believe in the state and he was, he was a punk rock, he had a couple girlfriends on the side, oh the priest, come on, the dude, they're men, sorry, so he had a, you know, a couple chicks on the side, whatever, but he was a boxer and I remember he was really tough and he would say the sermon in Latin, we'd show up and if some baby started crying, he'd turn around and stare at you until you, everyone's afraid of him. And I like that. I, I like the history of the Catholic Church. We would land barons like we would, you know, popes would die of syphilis with their <laughs> fucking girlfriends. Right? It was just like a full-on business. It was a strong empire. You know, if you were... So St. Stephen, the patron of Hungary, uh, Pope Sylvester XIV came down and said, Listen, we will, we'll give you recognized borders. You'll get alignment with the uh, Catholic Church. You have a chance to discommunicate people. Um, but you have to go from pagan to Christian to Catholic. <clears throat> so he tried doing it, but most, 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 a lot of Hungarian, two million Hungarians didn't want to do it. They want to stay pagan. So he killed them all. He killed them all, and he became the <laughs> patron saint of Hungary. And he killed two million of his own people to, to be Catholic. So Catholicism is this thing. It's like um, it was uh, back in the day. It was very powerful. But you know what? If I was born in Thailand, I'd be Buddhist. I'm more spiritual. I don't think that Jesus. I don't. I don't follow a dude who was had th crazy thoughts to kill his son on top of a fucking, you know, mountain and just about to kill him. God said, no, don't do it. I don't believe in that shit. Like, you know, you can't live in a, in a sperm whale's belly. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Adam and Eve, you got to be like fucking your mom or your sisters after a while. I mean, who's, where's the chick, right? There's <laughs> Cain and Abel. And what, they fucking their mom? Like, how do you, how do you get more people out of your, you know what I mean? It's just, it's all, cr it's, it's, it's fun party jokes is what it is. It's to tell a story. Yeah. But I'm more spiritual. I, I, I do believe in, like, you know, treat others as you want to be treated yourself. You know, that's why I went vegan, because I don't want to get hurt animals anymore. And this all this stuff, too. Like, we, we use so much natural resources. We fly all over the world. We're in tour buses just guzzling up gasoline. So it's kind of weird. Like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a uh, hypocritical, spiritual uh, person. person. Very hypocritical, yeah. Because I, I talk about it on stage, but then I'm flying in the 740 A380, what an amazing airplane. Flying on that thing, you know, just eating up the. If you fly over the, the, the North Pole, it's just it's all dirt. There's no more. There's no more. Um, I haven't. I haven't seen in the summer uh, a lot of ice over the North Pole like I did when I was a kid. We used to fly over when I was a kid in the 70s. So we got a new bubble coming. It's called a Harp Loan. Do you remember the the bubble that collapsed? The collapse of the subprime loans in in America when everything collapsed. There's another one coming. It's a harp loan, it's called. They, it's same guys, same Lehman Brothers, same everything, because this fucking Donald Trump de and his friends deregulated everything again, because you don't need, you gotta let the free market be. You don't need any, any you let the, the foxes guard the hen house. Let the bankers figure it out. Okay, let's do that. Let's make another fucking subprime loan. It's called the harp loan, and it's coming, and it's gonna blow up in a couple years, and here we go again. So it's, 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 a, it's a very strange time because we used to use tanks and guns to control people. Now we use, we use finances and internet. Because, oh, Facebook, great. Let me put pictures of my kids on there. Let me put pictures of my mom on there. Let me put pictures of where I work on there. Let me put pictures when I'm not home. If you're, if you're FBI or NSA, you don't need to go send, send a private detective false image. Just go on their fucking Facebook account. They'll give all this shit for free. And when you buy a new iPhone there in, uh, on T-Mobile, there is a list of things that you have to check off. And one of them is called the, you, you, you give up your rights to um, the uh, Patriot Act. And it's just a little click. And if you don't click it, you can't buy the phone. 
but you click away your rights so that the NSA can listen to your phone. You click away all those rights where all these people died thinking about your freedoms and your freedom of fucking speech, right? Just so you can get a goddamn iPhone. That's a thousand motherfucking dollars. But I have to have it. Because my Facebook counts on it. It's everything's so crazy. You know? What do you think should happen to, to change this? The system about capitalism, about uh, uh, money. It's all about money. Human beings are inherently selfish. And when we lived in small, like, yurts, and we lived in small villages and stuff, we can make it happen. But I don't know what you can do to stop people like Halliburton and, D and Dick Cheney from creating a war so his company can get bidless contracts. So that they can... Bl I'm like, why are they blowing up the fucking water purification system in Iraq? Why? Because Halliburton's going to go rebuild it for 50 times more and American taxpayers are going to pay for it. So that they, he gets more money in his, in, in, in his bank account. How are you going to stop a guy like that? I don't know. All I can do is, you know... Um, Voltaire wrote a, a book called Candide, and it says it was the bad guy at that time was uh, Napoleon. And he says, tend your own garden. Take care of that little patch. Your mom, your dad, your kids, your, your wife, your husband, your little area of the world. Make sure they're okay. And raise them right. And take care of them so they're not the next Donald Trump or the next Mussolini or the next Adolf Hitler, the next Stalin. You know what I mean? Yeah. Someone didn't love Stalin enough. Someone didn't see that. That, guy, that kid is a sociopathic murderer. And he went off to kill, what, 80 million people? Someone didn't love Mao Zedong enough. He had guy killed 300 million people? Right? And, and what, what did Stalin say? The death of one man is a tragedy. But the death of 100,000 men is a statistic. So I don't, know how to, I don't know how to make this world better, but I know that my family's taken care of. And whenever something's going wrong in my family, I really go out of my way to make sure we smooth it out, we work it out. We have some kids in my family, in my extended family, that are, that are kind of, you know, because a lot of people, they do drugs when they're pregnant. And some, some people in my family married into some bad people. And we are all bond together to take care of those kids because kids are fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we take care of our own. And if everyone just took care of their own, this world would be such a better place. It has to be the hard these are, way. These are good words. <laughs> <laughs> Wise words. I try to live them. I try to live them. We all should. This is why I wish I was Justin Bieber. He doesn't care. He wants to go party. Come on, babe. I want to be your boyfriend. And he comes off stage. And there's all these girls just dancing. Woo! Have a good time. Here, what am I talking about? The end of the world. A fucking bummer. Buzzkill. That's true. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it is what it is. What are you going to do? Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm a little bit depressed. Yep. See? See? <laughs> Try to be me. It's fucking horrible. <laughs>